sit here for a few hours and at least go through the motions of understanding that something's missing, something's wrong, and recognizing the fact that uh, everything is not all right. And secondly, to identify and have a little bit of connection to the spiritual world where the Beis Amikta still exists, the Beis Amikta Shomala, and by having a connection with that, you can have a little bit of a feeling of what's missing down here. Mikta Miliyahu says that the Avoda of Tishabov is to understand <coughs> on what we have to be mitzvahir, what's missing, and also to understand what that tsar has to bring to, what the goal is. The main sorrow, the main damage that the Beis Hamikdash destruction caused was Siluk Hashrina and Golos Hashrina. That's what we start the first Kina, alluding to the Pasuk and Eicha, Shobas Mesos Libeinu, Nepach Le'evel Mecholeinu. Chazal Darshan and Shirashirim, Ani Yesheinu Galibi Er, I may be asleep, but my heart is awake. Leave these Akadish Baru. The Rabbana Shalom is the lave of Klal Yisrael. Shobas Meso Slibenu. The Shrina has left us. And Nepach Le'evel Micholenu. Machol, Chazal say, Lashid Lobo, Akadish Baru, who is going to make a Machol at Sadiqim. That is the euphemism for Olam Haba. Tzadikim Yoshvim, Vatroseim, Baroseim, Venehenem, Iziva Shechina. And if the Shechina left, then Nepach Le'evel Mecholein. That Mocho is missing. We don't feel that Kesher to the Rabbana Shalolam. What is Shechina? Shechina is the feeling, the Rabbana Shalom is everywhere. Not in any one place, and he's not in only one time. But from our standpoint, there are places in this world and times <coughs> that we can feel the imminent presence of the Rabbana Shalom more. The Shechina is that feeling that we have of where we can feel the Rabbana Shalom's presence and have a close connection with him, without separation, without mechitzes and chatzitzes separating us from him. And that's what's called the Vekus Bashem. The Nodab Yehuda says that, according to the Rambam, Shechina represents Hashgoch Hashem. And Golos Hashchina means Pshuto Kemashmo Hester Padi. It's hard to see the Rabban Shalom's interaction with the world. It's hard to see him in the world. That's what Chazal say. As long as Amolek is in the world, in Hakise Shalem, the in Hashem Shalem, the Rabban Shalom's Kise is missing an Aleph. And the Rabban Shalom's name is missing the last two letters, the Vav and the He, and only the Yud and the He are there. Based on the Pasuk, Yod al Keisko, Milchom al Hashem, Bamolek, Midor, Dor. We'd like to explain what that means. In Hashem Shalem, in Akise Shalem. Kise Hashem is the euphemism for Hashgachas Hashem. 
When a king sits on his throne, you know that he's in control. You can see him. You know that he is the one uh, controlling the authority over his Medina. As long as Amalek is in the world, the Aleph, Kibiyochul, the Rabbonu Shalom, the Aleph, is missing from the Kisei. You look and you see an empty throne. And without the Aleph, the word is case, it's hidden. Everything is obscure. You can't see the Rabbonu Shalom's presence in the world. You can't see his Ashkocha. Things seem to be haphazard. Other sources that seem to be causative in this world, political causes and social causes, economic causes. You don't see what's behind it all, the Rabbanu Shalom. So ain't ha-kisei shalem, and ain't ha-shem shalem. The shame of the Rabbanu Shalom, yud ke vav ke, is ha ya ho The Rabbanu Shalom transcends time was, is, and always will be. The first two letters of Shem Hashem are the building blocks of Hoya and Yihye, past and future. The only letters in those two words are Yud and Hey, repeated. Those are the only two letters. But Hove, you can't make out of those two letters. Out of the last letters of Shem Hashem, Vav and Hey, that's where the hove, the present, can be made. As long as Amalek is in the world, you can see HaKadosh Baruch Hu in the past. Look in the Torah, you'll see the Rav Hashem's interaction with the world in the past. You can also see him in the future. Look in the Navi, and you'll see what the Rav Hashem's interaction will be in the future. Those two letters are intact. The Vav Hei, the Hove, the present, where it's very difficult to see the Rabban Shol. The Vilna Gon says, that's only when there's no Beis HaMikdash. If Amalek is in the world, but there is a Beis HaMikdash, then those letters are returned to the world. That's why it says the Beis HaMikdash is referred to, Ki Bochar Hashem Metzio, Eva Lamosha Vlog. The Rabbanushim desired the Beis HaMikdash to be the place where he would dwell. The word Eva, Aleph, Vav, He, those are the letters that are missing from the Kisei, the Aleph, and the Vav, He from Shem Hashem. Those letters return to the world when there's a Beis HaMikdash. Gilu Yishchina, the fact that you could see the Rabbanushim in presence, ten Nisim happened every day in the Beis HaMikdash. You could feel the Rabbanushim's presence, it nullified and canceled out the effect of Amalek. But when there is no Beis Hamikdor, and Amalek is still around, then those letters are missing and that's the Shechina, the Shechina is missing. We don't feel that Kesher. We don't see the imminence of the Rabbanushim Olam, nor his interaction with the world. And that's why the word Geula is the same osios of Gal Aleph Vav He. Uncover that Aleph Vav He. Let the Kisei be Sholeim and the Shem Hashem also be Sholeim. Shlomo Harkevi writes the following. Avelus al Tzion hi hargosha shechoser lo ha efsharus et veikus azos. Avelus on the Beis Hamikdash is the feeling that this veikus, this connection to the Rabbanu Shalom, is lost. Hargosha sahevsin agadul ba'avsokas yuvida sashefa ba'chesed. We're missing that feeling of that connection that everything that happens in this world, everything we receive comes directly from the Rabbanu Shalom. 
גולש השכינה עצמו, אין מקום לשכינה בכל העולם בסגליה, the shechina itself is in Golis. Golis means it's hidden. There's no place that one can see the Rabbon Shalom's presence openly. Mishemakir zeo mishtoke umechake lizman sheyucha loshu lamatsu barishon aroi hu hu hamargish godl ha'aveda v'achurban hu yochol isabel. Only someone who has a tremendous desire to have that return, to be able to feel the presence of the Rabbon Shalom, to be able to feel the interaction of the Rabbon Shalom with the world. That person can be misadal, he's makir, he understands and sees that something's missing. <coughs> but somebody who lives in a physical world and he's tied to that world, the world of Gashmias, He's concerned with his economic situation. He's concerned with the petty gashmiyas and that's what fills his mind and his heart. He's rooted in this world. That kind of person has no place to feel anything missing spiritually. Can't feel the missing of the Ashra Sashrin. He's more concerned about his Gashmiistika needs. That person has hard time mourning for the Beis HaMikdash and Churban Ha'aretz. Raktsas al Gashmiya Sachisara. That kind of person feels that, look, everything's not okay Gashmiya's wise either. V'zei yokul ispasher b'neikol b'dvorim acherim shemazbiyim ritzono. And that can be compensated for even in the world of Churban. We are that person. Let's not fool ourselves. What concerns us mostly is not Ruchnius. All of our Gashmis are rooted in this Gashmiistic world. And therefore, it's very hard for us to be misabel, a golas hashrina, and siluk hashrina. We don't feel that we're missing all that much. Baruch Hashem, we have Shivas and Torah and Tefillah. And Ruchnius, we have Dayo Vahos. And Gashmi is not like a fair lech either. Shwarma places and pizza shops and uh, whatever you want. So what do we miss? Silik Hashrina, Golas Hashrina, Hashgocha Sashem. All very nice, but it doesn't really speak to most of us. And therefore, it's very hard to be misabel. Therefore, it's good for us to sit here, and if we can't feel it emotionally, <coughs> And Tisha B'Av mourning is more intellectual, more the side of going through the motions, of trying to understand a little bit what's missing. Famous Misa, the Leib Elio brings down Plato. Counter Yirmiyo Anovi crying over the Churban. And he said to him, uh, an intelligent man as yourself shouldn't be crying over stones and wood that was destroyed. And secondly, it's not right to cry over the past. Don't cry over spilt milk. Don't cry over things that 
You can't correct. So your Miol told him you're a philosopher. You probably have a lot of questions that you haven't been able to resolve. Ask me any question you want. And Plato asked him his deep philosophical questions that he had no answers for, and your Miol answered every single one of them. And your Mial told him, if you are wondering where I got all of this wisdom from, to be able to answer your question, it came from those stones and that wood and that building. And that's what I'm crying about. And your second question, it's not proper to cry on the past. That question I can't answer because you can't understand the answer. The altar from Kellum said, so what was the answer that Plato couldn't understand? That we're not crying for the past. But we understand that if we cry properly and we appreciate what's missing, the revolution will bring it back and fulfill that which is missing and bring it back again. <laughs> Aside from losing the ability to attain all of that, there's a difference in Klal Yisrael that was affected by Churban Beis Hamikdash. The Chazonish writes in a letter, Meshech HaGolos Oshak Mishon Ruach HaKodesh Asher Hibdilonu Mikol Am L'Sheim Ulusehilo Lishiferes the Golas took away a little bit of what Cloud Yisrael is supposed to be, took away that Ruach HaKodesh which separated us from the nations of the world. Hayinu Am HaSefer, we used to be the nation that was epitomized by Sforim. Am Mavakish Chaim Nitzchiv, through those Sforim, we were that nation that looked for eternal life. Am Yodim as Balabira, the nation that knew the Rabbanu Shalom. Am Yodei as Chavoso Beolamo, nation that knew what its purpose is in this world. Yodei Lahavel as Tanuge Besarim, a nation that made little of the petty needs of this physical world. Am Oif Toro Mitzvah, Am Shoef Lishlemus Hamidos. All of that has changed in Golis, we became a nation almost similar to other nations. We lost our, what makes us special, we lost our Yichud. Because of that, tremendous Chilul Hashem, how the nations themselves look at us. Sedra says what the goal is. When Klal Yisrael keep the Torah properly, then it makes an impression even on the nations of the world. And they see the Kedusha. They see that we are Abde Hashem. They see, we see that we are Nekayim Dvar Hashem, which can only command respect, admiration. And the Goyim themselves say, They say, But when Shovas Mesos Libeinu, and Nepach Le'evel Micholeinu, when we lost that Kesher with the Rabbanu Shalom. And you don't see God's presence in the world and the nations don't see it on us. Then as it says in this Kina, Sri Umo Shashimuni Be'edrei Chaveirai. Then instead of looking up and admiring us and seeing us as representatives of the Rabbanu Shalom, the nations of the world see us as filth.
years ago, I got stranded on a Sunday morning in Ashtabula, Ohio. I was driving from Cleveland to New York early Sunday morning, the beginning of Ben Asmanim. My wife was already in the mountains by her parents. And I wanted to surprise her, so I drove up in my, uh, I don't remember what kind of car it was, but it definitely was not a uh, late model car. And uh, right, right outside Ashtabula, Ohio, the car uh, started to overheat. And uh, mistakenly, I thought that I could maybe make it to a gas station. And then the car started looking like a rocket ship. And uh, the motor exploded. And I was stranded on the highway outside Ashtabula, Ohio. Sunday morning, about 7 o'clock in the morning. And finally, a, a pickup truck passed by, saw that I was stranded there, a goy from Ashtabula, and uh, he offered to uh, take me into the town and uh, to wake up his father-in-law, who owned the gas station, was a car mechanic, and probably could come and help me. So he gave me a ride into Ashtabula, Ohio, 7 o'clock Sunday morning. We went and woke up his father-in-law, which he wasn't too happy about altogether. And um, very nicely they went, towed my car in, and told me that the car was a total loss. There's no way of salvaging it. And uh, I would have to leave it there in Ashtabula, Ohio, and somehow get to Cleveland another way. Very, very nice people. They offered to drive me about 90 miles to Erie, Pennsylvania, to an airport so I could get a plane to Cleveland. They offered to keep the car for free, watch it in case I wanted a second opinion and didn't believe them that it was worthless. I could bring somebody else who wanted to buy the car. And um, the guy looks at me and he says to me, you know, your car is worth almost nothing. It's safe for me. <coughs> finish and come back. I can claim my car if I want, whatever. They drove me for free to the airport. Very, very fine people. But these are people who never saw a Jew in their life, who had no idea they were, the idea they were sitting next to one. But they, what they knew about Jews were schiumos. Jews are filth, cheaters, liars, connivers. That's what we've become. Look at the world. A nation more detested. Israel. Israel was supposed to solve the problem of anti-Semitism. That was Herzl's dream. That if we'll just have our own country with our own language, and our own post office, and our own army, and our own economy, then we won't be parasites living off other people's lands and other people's economies and speaking other people's languages and will be normal. And subsequent Zionist thinkers added, and we'll also have our own criminals and our own perverts. <coughs> and we'll be normal like all the nations of the world and then they'll love us. So Baruch Hashem, today we have our own country and our own language and our own post office, and our own army, and even a lot of our own criminals, and a lot of our own perverts. And Baruch Hashem, the nations love us. They just don't know what to do for us first. Solve the problem. No more anti-Semitism in the world. Not only is there not no anti-Semitism, but we've created a new anti-Semitism much more refined anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism used to be, I hate all those Jews with the long noses. That's a very unrefined. But now, Goyim don't hate Jews with long noses. They hate Israelis, because they are pushy occupiers. 
people who oppress poor other people. Who are those Israelis? All those Jews with the long noses from the Neture character all the way to the most leftist. They're all Israelis. They're all Zionists. So we've given the Goyim a new anti-Semitism, much more refined than the old anti-Semitism. Not only has it served the purpose. So Golis Hashtina, like the Chazoni says, we become a different nation. Our connection to the Rabban Shalom has been severed to the point where it makes a difference in us. And the Goyim see it too. In addition, Golis Hashchina is that the Rabban Shalom is mitzvah. The Rabban Shalom created us because he wants to have a connection with us. Because he wants to be mashpia on us. And if we cause that that connection can't be, and the Rabbi Hashem has to cut off his hashpa from us, then it's a tsar for him. Chaim Velozhna writes, the aim of Shire Laharich Godel Hatsar Shalashchino Kibiyoko. It's impossible even to imagine the tremendous tsar the Rabbi Hashem had. The Magid told the Beis Yosef, "Shim hayise yodeo margish godul tsar ashchina kebiyachol me avonosecho." Because of our averus that we separate ourselves from the Rebbeinu Shalom, and because of the averus that caused the Chorban, cloud Yisrael as a cloud, have been separated from that imminent close relationship with the Rebbeinu Shalom. <clears throat> if we knew how much that pains the Rabbana Shalom. Lohaya Arev Lachaych Shum Dover Maicho. A person wouldn't be able to eat. He'd have no enjoyment from anything that he ate. Alohaya Libcha Note, Litain Shum Macho Bethicha. Me Godl Hamarirus. Because how bitter a person would be if he really could understand how much suffering he's causing the Rabbanu Shalom. He wouldn't want to eat. We wouldn't need halachas of Tisha B'av. Have a fast. We, nobody would want to eat. Nobody would want to do anything. Why would you want to have any pleasure? But because we don't feel it, and we don't understand it, so we have to have halachas. You have to fast. Well, the other he knew you. There. Put on us, mitzad hadin, it wouldn't have to be put on us mitzad it would be a natural res result of feeling that goal is hashrina. Yisil Shisharin writes that that is the ultimate avodas Hashem. The ultimate avodas Hashem is to want to serve the Rabbanu Shalom for his covet and therefore to feel the terrible chil Hashem, the ter terrible tsar that we caused the Rabbanu Shalom, when we're not able to serve him properly. He nevada tzorach she itztayer tomi tsar mamish ala golos vela churben mitzad mashes egorin miut kibi yochol echvodo yispora the yisavu legeula he should be shabo yia ilu lekavod shmo yispora person should feel he wants to be marvik hod shomayim. And as long as there's no base amikta, as long as we're in Golas, the miyut, the chil the miyut in hod shomayim. Yim yomar odom, miyani umoani sofum shespal ala golos ve yushalayim, amit neit filosi yukumsu agolios ve tichmach ha yeshua. If a person says, if that's the case, what am I, what do I have shaykhahs for that? Who am I? The daven for Kvod Ashtina, is my davening going to help? Me, who can't even feel it, who's just going through the motions, what's it going to help? To Shuvaso Betzido, says the Mesil Sishari, Kaosu Shishonino Lepichot Nibra Adam Yechide, they should call Echot Yomar Bishvili Nibra Haola, and every person should feel that it was Kedai to create the world just for him, and what he does is significant. 
כבר נחס רוח ופונה וישבורת, שיהיו פונה מבקשים מספר למזור. זה רבונו שם גץ טרמנדס נחס רוח, ונגיד דאבינס, that he should be able to have that קשר with the רבונו שם again. the אף שלא תעשה בקושו שם. מפני שלא הגיע הזמן, או מאיזה טעם שיהיה, and even if the time isn't right, and the Rabbanu Shalom is not going to fulfill our tefillah, and Mashiach is not going to come at this moment. Still, the fact that people want it, the fact that they ask for it, the fact that they think about it, is a tremendous nachas ruach, tremendous simcha to the Rabbanu Shalom. הרי כאן שחייב אם אנחנו בזה ואין לנו ליפות מפני מיעוט כוחנו and therefore we're chayet to at least go through the motion tell the Rabbanu Shalom we care bothers us that we don't understand but we want ואין לנו ליפות מפני מיעוט כוחנו you can't talk to yourself because what can we accomplish כי על קיוט שבזה שונינו לא הולך המלוך הוא לגמור You're not mechuyiv to do everything. You have to try to do what you can. In order, the Alshich says, however, with all of that, in order that we shouldn't be lost completely amongst the Goyim. And even though the Shechina is hidden, hard to feel, but the Maisa, the Shechina went with us into Golos. Chol mokum shigolu golos Shechina imohem. And finally, we are redeemed. It says, the Shav Hashem. But his Baruch who goes back with us, not the Haitian, not he brings us back. He could be awful, goes back with us. And therefore, there are places and times and things where one can still feel a certain amount of shrimp. We haven't lost it completely. Because if we lost it completely, we'd be lost completely. But there's still threads where a person can feel the shin, and if you can feel it in those places, then you can have an idea a little bit of what's missing. Shimshon Pinker Zatzal quotes a goggle, he doesn't say who. He says, one of the five things that we are mourning for today, aside from the two korbanos, is Chora Shoir. That after all the Churbanos, the Romans plowed over Yerushalayim, plowed over the Mokom Anikta. He says, why is that add to the Avelis? They destroyed it already. What difference does it make if they plowed it over or didn't plow it over? He says, because the Romans wanted us to understand the past is finished. It's gone nothing to remember. It's a new world. Get used to the new reality. Forget about the past. And that's even worse than all of the Khurbanas. Therefore, it's not over. And like Yermio told Plato, he couldn't understand that. But we can understand it. Birkas Avram says, You have to understand the past. What was? The Nevi'im cried. 
The whole Megillah Seicha is one crying over what was lost by Churim Abayis. Vavadai lo nuchal ha'asi k'roi atipa min ayam imaylos k'dula sinyan amiktash u'kadosha. We're not capable of having a drop in the sea of an understanding of what's missing. The chol ha'sodos ha'tmunim ba'zeh v'chol zos mut lo leinu l'ishtadol al kolponim ba'oso tipa liyos meitzis min ha'harakim. At least what we can understand. Partially what we can understand is to have a connection to the Shvina that still exists in those places and those things that Chazal tell us that the Shvina is there. You think a little bit even if you can't understand it 100%, but a little his bonus, the purpose, the reason there was a Chorban is because Ami lo his bonon. Lizkor es Chorban shnei bote mitoshev z'vies golos am Yisrael. V'mishne nimnu aseres asora nisi sh'nasu la voseinu veis hamikdash v'im hoyu nisim gluim sh'kol Yisrael ro sholosh pom v'ashoma olu l'regel the row nay shame on him, spook him, stack him, revoc him. Nisim that happened daily. Every Sholosh Regal and Cloud Israel came, and even though they stood packed in, but when they were able to be misvada on their korbonos, everybody had Arba Amos, and nobody should hear their vidui. The Chod Israel rose to Yorda Eshmi Shomayam on his Bayah. The Eish on the Mizbeach was a special fire. It crouched on the Mizbeach Kari, Bora Kachama, the Eish Bamamish, the Ocheles Lachin Kiveshim, the Enomala Osha, and they saw that fire. And they saw the Lechem upon him, that it was as warm and fresh a week after they put it down, as it was when they put it down. And he used to pick up the shulchan and show the only regal in this nace. So even thinking about that, understanding what was, just push it the words, should make us have a tremendous chuka for what can be. Baron Cutler also about the world after the Churban Beis Amikdash and what the world was like when there was a Beis Amikdash. Achur min nogea gam lo madrog yaseinu aruchoni shalam Yisrael kulo. Madrega of Klal Yisrael has gone down because of Churban Beis Amikdash. Ula madrega so aruchoni shakol yochid biyochid and the potential of every individual also has gone down. Kvot Shomayim HaMurgash V'nire V'olil In the time of the Beis HaMikdash you could see the Kvot HaKadosh Baruch Hu openly V'yesodos V'emuna Ha'yum Nirim V'olil L'chol Boi Olim V'Beis HaMikdash All the Shlosh Esrei Korin you could see them with your eyes V'hoisa Ashpoh G'dola B'nim Torah V'das Hashem It was easier to be able to learn Torah and to know Torah but how you make a love of the Madrigos to Kedusha was easier to attain Kedusha. But also we mikdash v'shochanti v'socham v'socho shakol echot v'echot. That's when there was a base of mikdash and we can at least feel a little bit. Aporos avonos, people know there are veiris by the time of the base of mikdash. Because of the korbanos, a person didn't go a whole day without kapora savonos. <laughs> the Yaris Devash, Yosin Eibshit says, we need Misha'in Daito Shlema, a person who's not totally with it, with his mind. Lo <laughs> Yargish a person like that can't really feel pain. Got 
Bechisorim Dateinu, we don't have a full das. So we don't have a full recognition of our own tsar. The Ein Shota Margish, a fool doesn't really have any feeling. Yosef Das, Yosef Machov, the more Das, the more a person can feel pain. If we really understand what we're missing, really understood what the Churban Beis Hamikdash caused, we wouldn't be able to. Chochmo Musr brings that a person feels what he feels has a connection to him. He says people get up in the morning, they don't take notice of the fact that the sun rose, even though their entire life and everything in this planet depends on the sun, they take it for granted. But if a person has a little bit of negias, he has a little garden, so he's concerned. Is there sunlight today? Is the sun shining? From his little garden of negias, that makes the sun important. Even though without that, the sun is very important. But if you don't feel a personal connection, you can take it for granted. That if we have some personal connection, the Hurban Abayas, maybe we wouldn't take it for granted. Nobody feels really any kind of personal connection. And therefore, we take it for granted and we let it pass by. So if today a person can at least feel a little bit of what he's missing, there was this Gilui Kvod Hashem, Gilui Ashina. Where would I be a little bit different? Maybe I wouldn't have so many Averis. Maybe I would learn a little bit more Torah. Maybe I'd be a little bit more Kodesh. Make it personal, at least as much as if you have some vegetables growing and you need the sun. Then maybe I can feel a little bit of what it's all about. Therefore, I thought that it would be a good idea today to speak about those things where the Shrina still exists to a certain amount, in a certain measure. And if we can feel the Shrina through those things, then maybe we can relate it to the Gilu Shrin that we're missing. What are those things? And each of them will relate to a different kina. Talmud Torah. Shin is found in the Torah. Chesed and Tzedakah. The Pintel Yid. Shin is found in the heart of every Jew. Tznias. Talmidei Chachomim. The Jewish home. Bote Knesios, Bote Medrosos, Kehilos, Sibur, Shabbos and Moe, Kohanim, and Eretz Israel and Yerushalayim. Those are the ten things, ten places where the Shrina still, you can still feel Shrina in those places, and we'll explain each one where the Shrina is, what you can feel. From there, maybe to get a taste. And if you think, then you have hope. Because the Churban came because Ami Lohis Bonon, if you don't think, then even the most instinctive things that are instinctive to an animal, Yoga Shor Koneu, the Chamore Bus Ba'alog, even the most instinctive things a person ignores and forgets. <clears throat> and if a Makayim call a Mesabala Yerushalayim, then Zochevaroa Bissimchosa, if we really begin to understand what's missing, then we'll understand what could be, and we'll have a tremendous chuka to get it back. That is one of the purposes of this Avelis and the purposes of Tisha And if we have that feeling, 
we want it back. And then during the year, we do everything in our power to get it back. Then Taka will be Zohar, that by next year, you won't have to sit here on the floor. But these days will be changed. We sosum, the simcha, the moadim tovim. I was thinking that when Mashiach comes, it's not only Tisha B'av that will be a yomtiv, but Asiri B'av will also be a yomtiv. Because some years, Asiri B'av is the Avelis. And if the Rav Hashem said that it's going to be turned, the Sosom, the Simcha, it means both days. It comes out an interesting thing. But now in Golis, in Chutzlar, it's there are two days of Yomtev. There's as well as one day. When Shiach comes, and there's a new Yomtev called the Yomtev of Tisha B'av. We'll have two days of Yomtev here. The ninth and the tenth. The Yontif Sheni also on the tenth day of August. And that'll be the payoff for all the years of Golas, at least we are Zoha. The new Yom Yom Tovim, Yom Yom Tovim, that here also will be able to keep two days of Yontif, Ezra Sashem. Start the first Kino Shabbos.